being an old country boy, unlike some of y'all city dwellers, I developed a connection to nature. We raised farm animals. Also, I would go out into the uh, forest area and I would watch, I would observe the squirrels and the chipmunks and uh, the possums and the geese and ducks and deer, all those wild animals in the uh, forest-like area. We lived in a rural area. The fish, the frogs, the crayfish. My mother would watch Mutual, Mutual of Omaha Wild Kingdom and a lot of these animal type um, video television series. So there was connection that I had and an understanding and a respect and a love for nature. We grew our own food. You could watch a seed going to the ground and in a few months you would have a watermelon, you would have corn, you feed yourself. It's just, I can't describe the feeling that you have when you are close to nature. Also be a country boy, also being a country boy, we would go to church. And I was introduced to religion at a early age. And what you notice in religion, religion makes you afraid. It, it's the first time that you're introduced as a child that you wonder about something called death. You didn't know that you was gonna die. It was a horrible feeling when I was talking to somebody and I was learning about life and you know you're going to die one day, right? What? Because you had no knowledge of death until somebody told you about it. I, I myself, as a child, we had not experienced an elder or somebody in the family that had died. I did not know about death except when it came to religion. But you don't have to worry and you don't have to be afraid of death because there was somebody who died for our sins that conquered death. And you could do the same thing. Just be loyal to Christ. Obey his commandments. And even though your flesh and blood will die, your soul will you will be saved and you have opportunity to enter the kingdom of heaven. Even so, this made me afraid and fearful of death. And it's not a good feeling to run around being and living your life afraid not only to die, but of disobedience to a God that will punish you and hurt you. One of the things that I, or one of the first things that I've done to try to conquer my fear of death was when my grandfather died, even though I was very, very afraid, I went to the coffin and I touched his face and rubbed his face and I kissed his forehead and I told my grandfather goodbye. And as I grew older, I would watch autopsy videos. I would watch death videos. I would go to a funeral home and visit people who are dead in the funeral home that I did not know. Because it was important for me, I had to get over and override this, this fear of death. Religion uses fear to control. Religion uses 
fear and death as punishment is a means to control. The human being, because of religious teachings, the human being believes that they or we are better than the squirrel, the, the flea, the octopus, the goldfish, the dog. We think that we are better than grass and poison ivy and roses and we think we better than all life on the planet. There's nothing higher than a human being. We don't give a damn and don't care about life on this planet. Even in religious teaching, everything on the earth is to serve man. And man is next to God. And, and of course, man serves God. He's the ultimate slave master. And since we are better than animals, we are better than the other life on this planet. There are those who get offended when you tell them or make a suggestion that we evolved from apes. Like what difference do it make? We do know where we come from. We come from sperm and egg. You don't want to come from an ape. Do you know what sperm and egg look like? It's mighty, mighty gross, right? I would rather come from an ape than sperm and egg because an ape is already evolved to a certain point. Sperm and egg is just gross and nasty, <laughs> okay? In religious teachings, they want us to believe that we just dropped out of the sky as a fully mature human being, even though none of us came on this planet as a full-grown human being. We were sperm and egg, and then we evolved, like the Quran said, we evolved until we reached our eventual perfection or maturity. And that's all. And then there are those who think they are so high and mighty, make mockery of the origins of human beings, when the reality is, at one time or another, all human beings lived in caves. All human beings lived in mud huts, all human beings lived in grass huts, all human beings at one point in time lived what we call primitive. Matter of fact, some still do right now to this day, including melanated people. There are melanated people who still live in mud huts right now in 2022. I got the uh, date wrong down here. It's 2022. But we're, that's because we're so arrogant. I'm so better than everybody. You're better than all life. You the, you the shizit. Arrogant. Even to the point we call ourselves God. Now there's only one God, but we the baby God because I'm God. I, I can't be just a I'm not like a piece of grass or or elephant or a tiger or a gazelle. I, I, I'm better. We have a nasty, arrogant, self-righteous, pompous, bougie attitude. So let's look at the behavior of God. You're a drug addict. You're a meth fiend. You put, you put other people in jail and prison, criminals. You sell your body for money. You are a murderer. You are a rapist and a killer. You are a pedophile. This is God. You don't know how to talk to each other like you have some sense. So you kill each other like they are doing right now on a large scale, Ukraine and Russia. And daily in the United States, all over the world. I don't care if it's Africa, Asia, all over the world. People are making market of each other, exploiting each other, making slaves, getting drunk, dope fiends all over the earth. But you're God and you're better. I've never seen an elephant on crack. I've never seen a bear drive drunk. 
but we're God and so special. The most destructive, nasty, violent life form on this planet. Disgusting. You're God, but you can't fly. Birds can fly. You're God, but an elephant is stronger than you. A bear is stronger than you. A crocodile is stronger than you. There are animals that can freeze in the wintertime and wake up in the summertime. Can you do that? There are animals that can fall off a cliff and survive. Can you do that without being all busted up and injured? But you're God. You got all this power. You have all this intelligence, but you're a crackhead. You're drunk. You're a porn addict. Child molester. Do you see animals going around drunk? Molesting their babies? But you're so great. And of course you can't die. The elephant would die because they have no soul. The ant would die. The termite would die. The giraffe would die. The hippopotamus would die. Oh, but the human being, oh, I can't die. You see, you see, human beings, we don't die. We just transition to another life form. We turn into a ball of gas. And see, there's other dimensions where we live. Now, we are a screw up. And we're violent and we're nasty and disgusting in this reality. So, we're just going to go to another another planet, another realm, and continue our nasty, destructive behavior. Why would any God, why would any creator, as whacked out as we are, as human beings, in the manner that we are, why would he gift you, and not the elephant, gift you a second chance at life, turn into a gas, and you go into another realm and all like that, as disgusting and arrogant and nasty as we are. You already dirty up this house just so that you can go to another planet, another realm, and dirty that up as foul and disgusting and arrogant as the human being is. Why should you have more lives as disgusting and trifling as we are? You can't die. This is how arrogant we are. You're going to live forever. <laughs> wow. And I hear this all the time. We don't, there's no such thing as death. Well, let me tell you something. There might not be no such thing as death, right? One thing is for sure. One day, and you can't deny, one day your happy ass going to be in that casket. And we're never going to see you and your disgusting, arrogant, pompous ass again. So take your merry, troublemaking ass to planet X, the, the, the seventh dimension, the fifth dimension, whatever dimension, as long as you get the hell out of here, you was disgusting in this reality, and you're going to be disgusting and a piece of a shizit wherever you go. What's going to change you? What's going to make you different than how you are in this life? Going, turn into a ball of gas. You're just going to be a disgusting, trifling, arrogant, pompous ball of gas. You're going to be a, 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 a bit, a bitch in the fifth dimension. You're going to be disgusting. You're going to be a crack and a dope fiend in the other realm. This is why I love death. Because death puts a period on it all. And whatever it is after don't make any difference. It all brings us to that reality. 